I believe we exist in a multiverse of universes. Impossible is relative. I agree, along with Carl Sagan, that we should eventually become a two-planet species. Life is too precious to place on a single planet. There are dangers, but only dangers if people don't understand where technology is taking us. It seems that the one characteristic most closely correlated with success in life, which has persisted over the decades, is the ability to delay gratification. I would like to believe that crop circles are evidence of visitation, but there have been too many people who have admitted to creating these crop circles, and too many people who have shown how to make one on TV programs, so I have my doubts. All kids are born genius, but are crushed by society. If you want to see a black hole tonight, tonight just look in the direction of Sagittarius, the constellation. That's the center of the Milky Way galaxy, and there's a raging black hole at the very center of that constellation that holds the galaxy together. Science is definitely part of America's infrastructure, the engine of prosperity, and yet science is given almost no visibility in the media. In the future, the internet might become a brain net where we send memories, feelings, and sensations. The brain weighs only three pounds, yet it is the most complex object in the solar system. Global warming is actually a misnomer. It should be global extremes and global swings because you add. As you add more energy into the atmosphere, it sloshes around. Energy does not simply uniformly warm up the planet, and that means droughts in one area, enormous snowstorms in another area, 100-year floods here, 100-year forest fires there. I would hope that the publicity around the Higgs boson would increase the public awareness of physics and cosmology. Talent hits a target no one else can hit. Genius hits a target no one else can see. The river of time may fork into rivers, in which case you have a parallel reality, and so then you can become a time traveler and not have to worry about causing a time paradox. To understand the difficulty of predicting the next 100 years, we have to appreciate the difficulty that the people of 1900 had in predicting the world of 2000. No matter how beautiful the theory, one irritating fact can dismiss the entire formulism, so it has to be proven. In science, nothing is ever 100% proven. Intelligence seems to be correlated with the complexity with which we can simulate future events. Some people seek meaning in life through personal gain, through personal relationship, or through personal experiences. However, it seems to me that being blessed with the intellect to divine the ultimate secrets of nature gives meaning enough to life. When we're born, we want to know why the stars shine. We want to know why the sun rises. What do oil company executives, vampires, and NASA bureaucrats all have in common? They fear solar energy. If you could meet your grandkids as elderly citizens in the year 2100, you would view them as being basically Greek gods. That's where we're headed. Physicists are made of atoms. A physicist is an attempt by an atom to understand itself. I'm not a science fiction writer. I'm a physicist. These are scientists who are making the future in their laboratories. If you take a look at the most fantastic schemes that are considered impossible, teleportation, warp drive, parallel universes, other dimensions, artificial intelligence, ray guns, 
you realize that they can be possible if we advance technology a little bit. We have to realize that science is a double-edged sword. One edge of the sword can cut against poverty, illness, disease, and give us more democracies. And democracies never war with other democracies. But the other side of the sword could give us nuclear proliferation, biogerms, and even forces of darkness. It's pointless to have a nice, clean desk because it means you're not doing anything. In the future, I can imagine that we will genetically modify ourselves using the genes that have doubled our lifespan since we were chimpanzees. To understand the precise point when the possible becomes the impossible, you have to appreciate and understand the laws of physics. Once confined to fantasy and science fiction, time travel is now simply an engineering problem. When you come up with a theory, you fall in love with the beauty, the simplicity, and elegance of it. But then you have to get a sheet of paper and a pencil and crack out all the details, hundreds and hundreds of pages, because you have to prove it. Math is discovered. To be invented requires an inventor, but math exists outside of humanity. But ultimately, the laws of the universe will be reduced down to a single equation, perhaps no more than one inch long. But leaves the final question, where did that one inch equation come from? Time travel and teleportation will have to wait. It may take centuries to master these technologies. One in 200 stars has habitable Earth-like planets surrounding it in the galaxy. Half a billion stars have Earth-like planets going around them. That's huge, half a billion. So when we look at the night sky, it makes sense that someone is looking back at us. No one knows who wrote the laws of physics or where they come from. Science is based on testable, reproducible evidence and so far, we cannot test the universe before the Big Bang. In some sense, gravity does not exist. What moves the planets and the stars is the distortion of space and time. The universe is a symphony of strings, and the mind of God that Einstein eloquently wrote about for 30 years would be cosmic music resonating through 11-dimensional hyperspace. Global warming is controversial, of course, but the controversy is mainly over whether human activity is driving it. Scientific revolutions, almost by definition, defy common sense. For those who believe, no explanation is necessary. For those who do not believe, no explanation will suffice. <laughs>